and also Dr. Friedman, what a wonderful presentation. Um, <clears throat> so I'm gonna tell you a little bit about some of the work in progress at Intermountain, certainly work in progress. We're, we're not there yet, but uh, I think there's some things that we are doing uh, that'll get us there eventually. Um, so again, uh, Stephen Hunter, I'm a physical therapist and uh, the director of our internal process control team at Intermountain Healthcare. I'll describe what that is. Uh, here in just a few minutes. Okay, I'm going to try and advance here. Spacebar. There we go. So let me tell you a little bit about the environment at Intermount Healthcare that I think has contributed to uh, this this learning um, this learning community. Hold on. Okay, because I'm back with the video. Um, and that started really with uh, Dr. Brent James. Uh, he's, he had been at Intermountain for over 25 years. I was fortunate to, to come to Intermountain uh, at about the same time. And he has really created a, a culture of continuous quality improvement, but his focus really was to train literally thousands of individuals uh, at Intermountain Healthcare, which, which inbred into us this, this group of individuals that think uh, similar in terms of improving care, uh, reducing variation and those types of things. So the next thing that, that I think has helped is, is measurement. We started over 20 years ago, uh, <clears throat> this rehabilitation outcomes management system, which collects patient reported data. We started with orthopedic patients, uh, every visit on every patient and develop this robust database that could then help us make better clinical decisions and also look at what we were doing to determine if it was making a difference. Intermountain has long, for, for many years, focused on trying to reduce costs long before value-based care was popular. Uh, and, and even though it may have reduced revenue, uh, what it did is focused us on what it improving the value that we have for payers and for uh, patients. We've also focused on standardizing just about everything, trying to reduce variation that we don't want. And, and, and when we do that, we notice that care improves and cost is uh, reduced. And this is part of this whole continuous uh, cycle. And also Intermountain has been very supportive of us sharing. Uh, even with competitors, what we do and especially clinical processes that can improve the care for everyone. Okay, so let's speak specifically about rehabilitation services and our infrastructure that has really helped us to continue this learning um, system. Let's see. I'm in trouble with this video starting. Okay. Um, I, again, lead this internal process control team, uh, which is five FTEs of just wonderfully talented people that I work with, uh, Pam Dibley, Janine Holmberg, Beth Hunt, uh, Kevin Christensen. It, these are wonderful individuals that are focused on continual learning and um, curiosity and, and get a lot of work done. And, and this has been resourced by Intermountain and is a core to our infrastructure. We also have Dr. Kate Minnick, the Director of Research, who uh, is works very closely with us in, in, in looking at the evidence related to the work that we do. We have a full-time analyst dedicated just to rehab services. This is uh, Devin Woodfield. Uh, he's wonderful at creating dashboards, pulling data from multiple sources to help us. And also uh, a statistician uh, uh, that really works with us also if we really want to try and get some peer-reviewed uh, look at some of the work we do. Um, Intermountain Healthcare changed their structure within rehab services a few years ago from therapists reporting up to hospital administrators to reporting up to a central entity. And this has really helped us with uh, dissemination as well as accountability for uh, what our therapists do. And then lastly, the team is quite inclusive of, of other groups, uh, uh, athletic trainers, nurses, physicians, uh, so it's a diverse group. Um, I thought I would share with you just the vision and a uh, strategy statement of our internal process control team, which would give you an idea of what they do. Uh, and you can see that in front of you, but we really try to focus on helping leaders and providers to 
provide this value-based care across the continuum and, and make it an extraordinary experience for our, our patients. Again, the focus now is across the continuum of all services. Um, I mentioned that we measure uh, um, just about everything and, and clinical care is one example and it's part of our daily work. As a patient walks in, they fill out these uh, patient reported outcome surveys uh, on every visit. It goes into a database where the therapist can also classify the patient so that we can compare homogenous groups. And this is core, a core foundation to just about everything that we do. So just a quick example, and again, there's a lot on this slide, but it's really the principles that I want to demonstrate uh, of how we took patellofemoral pain and ran it through this process to try and improve the care that was delivered to our patients. So the first thing is we put together this learning group, this uh, learning community, I guess we could call it, to, to figure out what to do. And what they realized is we didn't have a standardized evaluation. And so they created that. They then... Uh, created a classification so that we all were talking exactly the same way about what the pelephemeral pain is. And then we developed a care process model uh, from our experience from the literature to help us focus on the care that's evidence-based. And then most importantly, developed a way to audit uh, our charts to look at therapists to see if they were compliant with the classification and then matching the treatment to that classification. Uh, and then we just continued to to do that feedback. So what happened when we did this and, and what's happened with multiple uh, uh, care processes that we've standardized? Well, what we did is we saw a reduction in failures. So this is what we call a failure to progress chart, which we use commonly. The, the top of this is, is uh, average uh, visits. Um, the bottom part in blue is the uh, failure to progress rate, which is the percent of patients who fail to meet a meaningful clinical improvement. And of course, we're trying to reduce that, just like we're trying to reduce failures with fall risk or with infection rates. And as you can see, once we standardize the care, um, that failure reduced. Again, I'm just having trouble advancing the slides. Okay. Um, then We've also noticed this also with other conditions, and this is with total knee, where the same thing occurred when we standardized the care. Okay, then lastly, in terms of what we're trying to do across the continuum. So this is an example of a, what we call a patient-centered dashboard. Uh, some of our other dashboards have focused on the providers uh, and their outcomes aggregated. This is an individual patient. And, and essentially what we looked at is this patient had two total knee replacements, which are represented by the dotted lines. And then we combine both patient-reported outcomes as well as functional things. We've got a five-time sit to stand, a timed up and go, uh, combined with some patient reported outcomes. And we look at this across the continuum. We collect this preoperatively during our acute stay, also in our home care and then in our outpatient. And this helps the, the providers look at what happened before so that they can help the patient in the current uh, care and then take them on to the next, the next level of care. So in summary, In summary, um, what we found is that we established these outcome collection as a part of the standard work. We identify this homogenous group, which we call stand, uh, classification, standardize the clinical evaluation embedded into our EMR, include this important audit process where we can provide uh, very helpful information back to our therapists to continue to learn and improve. And this is done in a non-punitive way. And then we measure the impact of the implementation and then just continue to repeat that. So thank you again for allowing me to uh, participate and I'll turn it back over to uh, Linda and Haley.